Hey everyone, so here we are revisiting Baltimore's notorious Gypsy Murder House, the first video I ever posted on the Filmit channel. The reason we're revisiting is because earlier today when I was driving by, I noticed that the side door of the house was wide open. Can't pass up that opportunity. So let's jump back real quick, watch a clip from the first video telling the backstory, and I'll hop back on when it's done. So in November of 1994, a man by the name of Douglas Thomas Clark was coming to this house. Uh, a lady, a gypsy by the name of Deborah Stevens, ran a palm reading business out of the front here. So Douglas Thomas Clark was coming to her quite often. And after a while, he started to believe that she had put a hex on him. So early one morning around 9.30, some neighbors across the street here in this house saw Douglas Thomas Clark and the gypsy having an argument on the steps here. That's the last time they ever saw her. Later on the day, in the day, uh, somebody came to check on her and they could not get an answer at the door. They were knocking on the door. They couldn't get her to answer. They finally pushed their way in and they found her right inside of this door on the floor, which I'll try to get a shot of here. Don't know if we can see this. But they found her on the floor Right, right about here, her head was over here. Her head was 10 feet away from the body. She had been completely decapitated and bludgeoned to death. And that happened right here. So here we are in the front door. And we're going to be doing a tour of this house so weird that today of all days I drove by this place and the side door had been broken into and it you know it's not like this is in out in a field somewhere or something this house is in a very busy intersection and basically in the parking lot of a busy Dunkin Donuts Now, this is the place where they found Deborah Stevens' body, and her head was found over here. Her son actually came to the house to check on his mother. I don't know what these fingerprints are, by the way. I just said very creepy looking. Uh, I don't know why those were there. <laughs> um, her son came to check on his mom, found a decapitated corpse in the front door thought that someone was trying to scare his mother because he didn't believe what he was seeing was real so he called his brother his brother came over discovered the head and they called the police these stickers here on the door were probably her sons or her, her uh, grandchildren's probably her sons um, Miss Stevens moved into this home in 1964 and lived here for 30 years until she was murdered. house sits here today still standing somehow um, I don't know how structurally sound the house is it seems like it's kind of falling apart but it is currently for sale probably more valuable 
the land than the actual house. Because it's in a very uh, busy neighborhood. And here we're looking at the bathroom. And we're going to get a look at uh, the bedrooms. I got to tell you, being in here was... uh, It was pretty cool, but it was also... Like, I was just completely freaked out. Like, I I wanted to get out of here really bad. (laughs) Even though I'm, like, on a busy road, I could just scream out the window, help. (laughs) But, man, it was was creepy. Anyway. That is the Gypsy Murder House. A very notorious forgotten property here in Baltimore you wonder on this busy road right here which is Pulaski Highway Route 40 this is right at uh, Pulaski Highway Route 40 and Haven Street you wonder all the people who ride by here do they ever remember the horrible murder that took place right inside of this door (laughs) 